Hi there! Welcome along to another Jenny video. Good to have you along. Thanks for watching here. We're going to be doing a box opening and review and today we've got a little number that I picked up uh, from Kerno Model Centre and this will be catalogue number 33825X. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. This particular model has the catalogue number 33-825X. It's a special commission from Kerno Model Centre and it's been uh, released here in this rather striking engineer's olive green livery. But the difference here from the standard releases that Bankman have done in the past is that it's got this duck egg blue band around the top. Now in the late 80s, early 1990s, some wagons, including these in engineer's use, did get a few embellishments, so I'm not entirely sure of the significance of the duck egg blue band. I've actually searched and searched online, and it's very difficult to get uh, any uh, good information on things as mundane as uh, freight rolling stock, but uh, a little history of uh, this wagon. The originals were built by the Southern Railway, and uh, the first few in Southern Railway frugal style were built on underframes from uh, ex London, Brighton and South Coast Railway coaches that had been scrapped. However, when those run out, later batches had new purpose made underframes. They are pretty long. They weren't the only eight wheel brake vans ever built. Uh, the Great Northern Railway did build a rigid eight wheel van for some very heavy unfitted freights, uh, but certainly. These were the far more successful design. They were designed for high-speed operation on both milk and parcels trains rather than uh, total stopping power, which was the more usual use of a brake van. They did have a lengthened cabin, but uh, this did not cover the entire twin bogey chassis. In later years, these were quite popular vans with crews uh, by virtue of the fact that they were rather large inside. Looking to the box, we have a pretty standard Backman box with the details on the end and uh, gives us some information there about produced exclusively for Kerno Model Rail Centre and this is the Queen Mary Brake Van Departmental Engineers Grey. Grey, I suppose, probably, um, well, it, it's, it's a little bit odd because nothing on this wagon is grey apart from perhaps the roof. Um, it's all Engineers Olive Green and uh, we've got that duck egg blue band around the top, but we'll forgive them that. Maybe its official designation was grey. Taking that out, uh, we can see in there we've got a little packet of extras. And helpfully, and this is actually quite unusually for Backman wagons, there's a little piece of uh, paper with a small diagram in there, which gives you an idea of uh, actually where to fit these. Um, it's certainly something that's been a problem with some of the more recent Backman wagons that they leave you kind of to guess where the parts go. No, no such problem with this one. Now, this particular wagon, the 33-XXX, does highlight the fact that this is a good deal of an older wagon. It has appeared over the years in the Backman range since the 1990s in a variety of liveries in the main range as well as special commissions. Now the tampo printing on this is, well, it's what we would expect from Backman. But uh, one, well, I wouldn't really call it a gripe. I think to call it a gripe is totally unfair because I can't see it with my naked eye. And we really struggled with a macro lens to look up some of the details on one side of this. And it would appear that the tempo printing has smudged ever so slightly. But really that is picking at almost invisible faults because you're never really going to notice. So it isn't really a big detraction. The other lettering and numbering we've got on there is pretty crisply applied on both sides and we also have overhead electrification warning flashes. The handrails on this model are moulded to the body but they are done very very well. Picked out in white you wouldn't actually really know that they're moulded on so again not really a great detraction. On the ends we've got the sand boxes and also the lamp brackets. Again pretty reasonably uh, moulded. The lamp brackets are a bit chunky and uh, it's probably more in keeping with a model which is now getting on uh, probably in excess of 20 years old and doesn't time fly. In terms of other detail, we've not really got an awful lot. The planking and the rivet detail is very crisply picked out. If we turn the model over and we take a good look here, we've 
got no sprung buffers. But again, this is what we'd really expect. And there's no point in fitting sprung buffers because they're never really going to be uh, of good use to the modeler. And I don't feel that they bring anything to the party other than extra cost. So again, not really a detraction. We've got the slimline tension lock couplings. However, you notice, because this is a much older model, they're actually moulded as part of the bogies. Now, if you get hold of an earlier version of the Queen Mary brake fan, they have the fatter uh, tension lock couplings, and these can be an absolute pain if you want to replace them. In fact, the only reliable way that I've found is actually to buy the bogies, which are available in two packs from Backman as a replacement part, and simply replace them. And that's what I've done with a number in my uh, rolling stock stable over the years. It does mean that if you want to fit alternative couplings, you're going to really, really struggle there and have to come up with a very innovative way to do it. Now, the biggest gripe on this model for me is that uh, even though you can see on the underside of these bogies, there's a wealth of brake detail, the quality control was somewhat lacking in my example and pretty much all bar one of the axles are out of gauge. They're in fact actually too wide and what I found when trying to run this example was that it rode up the flanges and derailed at every possible opportunity. And given the price tag, which is around the £25 mark, it's a little bit of um, a, a niggle with me that uh, something as simple as wheel back-to-backs hadn't been checked adequately. And indeed, when whoever assembled this would have put the wheels into the bogies, it should have been pretty obvious because they must have been an incredibly tight fit to get them in there. However, as this model is destined for a life in the display cabinet for me, I'm not going to trouble Kerno Model Centre too much by sending it back. Also on the underside, we've got twin vacuum brake cylinders and bogey sides there. They do look pretty nice. And what's interesting is that the brake shoes, well, they kind of do and they don't line up with the wheels. Uh, they're moulded a little bit on the thick side, but they do protrude back far enough to theoretically make contact with the treads. It's a bit odd, that one, uh, but it doesn't really detract from the model from any kind of uh, viewing angles. If we look again at the top side, there's no real interior to it. And I don't mean particularly inside the cabin, because you'd never really see that, even if there was an interior. But certainly in the verandas, there is a complete absence of any kind of internal uh, detail other than and the planked ends of the actual cabin. And in fact, you can see some of the weights in there, and it is quite a weighty model. The finish itself could be argued is slightly more basic than newer models, and a lot of this is down to the lack of separately applied details. However, it all comes together in a package that, for me, doesn't actually detract all that much. So it's a model that very much holds its own in the Backman range, despite its age. The price itself, as I've already alluded to, uh, for these special commissions, so you do pay a premium for these liveries, we're still looking at the £25 mark, which does seem a bit steep when you consider that the tooling for this model must have already repaid and recouped all of its development costs several times over. So it does remain a little bit of a mystery to me as to why Bankman are charging quite so much for a model of this age. That said, the model itself is a beautiful model, and certainly it's been a long-standing stalwart of the Bankman range, and it will be a welcome addition to the rolling stock on uh, Bolton Trinity Street, as I do have a bit of a soft spot for these engineers olive green liveried wagons. And it's nice to see that uh, retailers such as Kernan Model Rail Centre are taking the uh, initiative to produce some of these slightly more interesting models which might not necessarily make it into the Backman main range. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that was a little bit of an informative look for you. So don't forget to like this video, share it too, and thanks again for watching me on this channel. And until next time, subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But uh, you take very good care of yourself and until next time, bye for now.